Alright guys, what's going on? It's Cynical. Welcome back to another video. Today for you guys, I want to talk about something that I feel is pretty important when looking towards the mobile phone game scene. This obviously uh, refers to that of Kingdom Hearts Missing Link, but I think just gacha games in general. Uh, we sort of talked about this topic here with Kingdom Hearts Missing Link during my coverage of the game back in December. We know, of course, that Missing Link, like Union Cross, will also be a gacha oriented game, uh, pretty much meaning that you can spend real life money to buy premium currency to then do draws in the hope that you get a certain item out of those draws. There's set different percentages for each of the items, different pull tables, etc, etc. It is, we know now, the exact same system as Kingdom Hearts Union Cross. And from what I've heard too, uh, the pricing side of things is also pretty similar. Again, we don't know for sure because right now it's only a closed beta, though it's not happening now. I'm talking about the one that was happening in December. Uh, those prices could of course change, but I think Square Enix will probably keep them at around about a similar level to what was on display for Union Cross. Yesterday, Square Enix announced Nier Reincarnation, which is the mobile phone game. Again, it is gacha for the Nier series. Now, you guys should know, I love Nier, right? Emil, right there. He's pretty cool. Uh, but I love Nier. Nier is incredible. I was actually very excited for Nier Reincarnation when it released back in 2021. I played it for a little bit, then it just kind of dropped off. Uh, I'm sort of excited to dip into the story because the actual narrative, similar to like Union Cross, is pretty important and there's some really cool story points there. It's just, I, I couldn't do the whole like gameplay that was available for Reincarnation. Anyway, uh, Square Enix did announce that Reincarnation will be ending service uh, on the 30th of April. This game was available for two and a half years and is now facing its termination. When we compare this to Union Cross or what started off as Unchained's Key, uh, that kind of had a longer life cycle. Uh, when looking at the Japanese server that lasted for six years and for the global server that lasted about five years. So this is an incredibly short life cycle for one of Square Enix's mobile titles. The conversation though that I want to bring up for today uh, and and this will be relevant to that of Kingdom Hearts Missing Link when that eventually releases this year, is that people need to be careful when spending money on these services. Not just talking about Missing Link, but I think gacha games overall. This also then stems into the whole digital conversation for video games. We were talking about this a little while ago, but basically buying digital video games doesn't mean you necessarily own the game. You own uh, access to be able to download and install the game. You don't actually own it. The digital scene is like a little bit tricky in the sense of like, do you own it or not? I guess you kind of do if you do have it installed onto your hard drive and it's a game that doesn't have DRM, but if it is a game, that has a DRM, then you are required to be connected to the internet so that the server can essentially check if you own the license to be able to play that game. And trust me, a lot of games nowadays do have DRM. I think digital definitely comes with a lot of perks, without a doubt, but f digital, I love physical. And saying these words out loud are suddenly making me feel ancient, like I'm some 86 year old talking about the good old times. This is basically the same can of fish that you're dealing with here. People spent a lot of money on Kingdom Hearts Union Cross to of course buy jewels in order to do the banner pools or to buy jewels in order to buy the avatar outfits. And I mean, some people spent a ridiculous amount of money on this game because yeah, in order to get a decent amount of jewels, it, it would cost you like 30 to $50. And that's just to do like a few pulls from a banner. These prices kind of got a little bit better over time because people were complaining about them, but still in the end, they were ridiculous. Only for Kingdom Hearts Union Cross to then be shut down in 2021, that means that for all of those people that quite literally spent thousands, if not tens of thousands of dollars on that game, will never get their money back. Now, of course, I'm not sitting here telling you what you should and what you shouldn't be spending your money on. 
All of us are guilty of spending money on shit that just does not matter. But I think people definitely do need to be mindful when going into Kingdom Hearts Missing Link uh, this year about spending money on the game. I'm also not here trying to shit on Square Enix's business either. I think when people do buy microtransactions or more so like gacha currency to do pulls, they're also thinking at the same time, okay, well, I'm also supporting the company that I love. And that's totally fine too. I generally think about that as well when I'm making purchases like this because it makes me feel more justified towards my purchase. <laughs> At the same time too though, it does make me think about Kingdom Hearts Missing Link's life cycle. How long will this game's service run? Will it be five years, similar to Kingdom Hearts Union Cross, or maybe a shorter lifespan similar to that of Nier Reincarnation? Now this is just pure speculation. But Kingdom Hearts Missing Link is a different beast compared to Union Cross. Being that, of course, Missing Link is developed on Unreal Engine, it is a 3D action RPG game. To create models and stuff requires a little bit more extra work than what we saw in Union Cross. Because of this, I do feel as if when looking towards things like uh, you know, the pull banners, because there are 3D models for literally each different character piece. And also looking at the avatar clothing, we know there's a decent amount of pretty in-depth customization for your Keyblade wielder, that it's probably going to cost more to develop these assets for the game, which as an end result means that the actual prices of everything may potentially be higher than what we saw in Union Cross. However though, I don't think many people are going into these gacha games thinking that yes, they are going to be around forever, my money is well spent here, I'll always be able to access my character and look at the digital pixels that I spent I don't know, $15,000 on. I think everyone that's engaging in the current practices of gaming these days know that these sorts of services are incredibly temporary. The funny thing is though, I'm sitting here talking about all this and without a single doubt, with all six brain cells that I have in my brain, which is probably half the reason why I'm going to end up spending money in uh, Missing Link, is that yes, I will end up spending money in Missing Link. I'm stupid, I'm a sucker. You know, when it comes to your favorite shit of all time, I think it's one of those situations of like, you don't really need to justify a purchase. If you get a kick out of it, if this is what makes you happy, hey, go hard, throw your money at the screen. And I think that is the bottom line here, is that just do what makes you happy. Purpose of this video though, is to say that when looking at Kingdom Hearts Missing Link, please do be mindful when it does release later on this year, uh, about spending your money on the game. Please understand that this is a temporary service. It will not be around forever. And knowing Square Enix, the price point of a lot of these custom premium packs or currency packs in order to get some of that really cool stuff, and even to the point of actually encouraging players to spend money because that's how you get some of the best character pieces in the game to get the cool abilities, are probably going to be pretty expensive. Again though, I'm, I'm gonna spend money. I'm gonna spend money. They've got me by the nuts! They know what they're doing! Kingdom Hearts is consuming my life. There are keys everywhere. I can see keys. I can see my dollars right there floating into a keyhole. I am consumed by Mickey Mouse Japanese video game. Now also, as much as these services are temporary, it doesn't mean the actual access to the app in itself disappears. Still to this day, you can play Kingdom Hearts Union Cross and experience the story there. You also get like all of the avatar items that once used to cost real money in order to acquire to like fully customize your character in Union Cross. You know, you can watch all the cutscenes experience the story. I hope the same thing ends up happening here for Nia Reincarnation, because again, there is some pretty strong story points and I'm basically waiting until the uh, story wraps up, which the last story update will be March, so that I can then watch like a YouTube video without needing to actually go onto the app to watch all of the cutscenes with a shitload of filler. Same thing with Union Cross. If you do want to experience the story, don't do it via the app, because there is just too much filler to deal with, you really are just better to find a compiled YouTube video showing you all of the most important bits. We've also talked about how these mobile phone games need to be more accessible. A lot of people just simply hate them because strong story points are involved within these games, yet it's 
a mobile phone game. No one really wants to experience the story that way, especially if it is absolutely required or crucial uh, to the console experiences, aka Kingdom Hearts Union Cross. So in regards to that conversation, hopefully we do get some sort of Union Cross type remakey thing. Uh, so that it's all easily accessible, it's all compiled, you just chuck a disc in, whether it be a movie or a game. Square Enix seriously need to do it if it is going to be the foundation for the Lost Master Saga, starting with Kingdom Hearts 4. However guys, that is all for today, just a little bit of a warning and a conversation towards gacha-based games. At the end of the day though, do what makes you happy. However guys, I want to thank my patrons as per usual. You guys are incredible man, so thank you so much for the support. Uh, be sure to follow me on my other social media platforms. Also be sure to subscribe to the channel to keep up with everything. I'm Cynical, hopefully having a fantastic day and we'll talk real soon. Peace.